So today we're with Chris who works at Leica and he has brought a very special piece of technology that I've just been oogling over for many, many years here. Um, as you know, we, we like to recreate like digital environments in many ways. Sometimes we'll, we'll take like, a, like an HDR scan of an environment to project lighting and you know, materials and reflections onto you know, digital characters. Other times, like in uh, anime self-driving cars, we'll, uh, we'll like photo scan an entire environment with like a drone and stitch all the photos together and map it out to create a virtual environment. But Chris here has brought a special tool that can kind of do all that in one. <laughs> what is this thing? So this is the Leica BLK360. Uh, it's a 3D scanner using LiDAR. Uh, it's also got you know, HDR imagery capabilities, um, you know, typically used you know, more in the construction space and uh, capturing 3D scenes but you know, to a couple millimeter accuracy. Uh, but you know, now we're starting to get into getting some traction in the uh, visual effects industry, and that's why we kind of teamed up with you guys to try and check out some of those workflows. Yeah. yeah. So our goal for today is to photo scan our studio and the loading dock, and basically get a 3D model and a digital recreation of our entire workspace for for their use. Wow. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty sweet. So here's here's the interesting bit here. All right, uh, where did I put that camera down? Here's. Previously, when we film a video, like Boston Dynamics, for example, when we have to render out our 3D models of characters, we'll use something like uh, an Insta360 camera here because basically we can take multiple photos of an environment and create an HDR image. And that HDR image allows us to relight the environment and basically tell, where, tell our 3D models where the light sources are. And it also adds realistic reflections for that real world environment. So the whole Boston Dynamics videos, you can watch this. Um, every single shot of the robot there is using an HDR map that we took during that shot on set. And that's what helps those robots just blend in so well with the environment. But, but, what's the big difference though between using this and that, because they're both 360. Sure. We'll both get like 360 images from it. Sure. But what's the, what, what is the main difference with this and that? I mean, I would, the big difference is we're actually using you know, LiDAR. So we're actually using a, a laser uh, okay. to collect measured points to create a 3D model, actually, how, a 3D point cloud. So how, how, so how, do, how does LiDAR work? So LiDAR is using a, a laser from the inside, as you can see here. Uh, the laser's on the inside and it hits this mirror, this 45 degree angle mirror, and then that mirror spins and it shoots out a you know, laser point and using you know, time of flight technology, it's bouncing back and takes a measured data point. And so uh, the data itself is actually scaled. Um, but because of that, you know, as, this, as this rotates, then this whole thing spins, you've got a single laser beam kind of going like this, mm -hmm. and then it scan, you know, rotates 180 degrees, but then you're collecting you know, full 360 because you're capturing that slice all at once. How big of a space can this thing scan? Could it yeah. do the whole, could it get every, all the way back there? Yeah, yeah. actually, um, so from a single location, when it shoots out, it's got a maximum range of, of 60 meters, so about 200 feet. Um, so that's in you know, full 360, essentially the only kind of uh, blind spot is pretty much the, the footprint of the actual tripod right here. Um, but anyway, but just because that's just from one location, but as you do multiple setups, you go along and as long as you have it set up so that there's overlapping data, uh, you can register those together so you can do, you know, entire building um, and, you know, go from room to room, doesn't matter, you can, there's really no limit on that. Yeah, yeah. so that's what we're going to do today then, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah today we're going to go space to space here and scan our studio and then next time we have to film anything here or maybe even use this 3D model we've created, we have it right here on hand. Um, do you want to actually go to the loading dock first and start there? Sure. So, because yeah. I think that we can get some really good explanation and context of uh, yeah. the just just really what makes this special versus our current process. Sure. Cool. Sure. Oh yeah. Okay. So here in our loading dock, I, I can give you guys the best example of why this technology is really special to us. When we filmed our Boston Dynamics video, in order to get that robot looking like it's naturally in the scene, we would take our Insta360 cameras and we would scan a 360 HDR of this environment. And that, that image basically allows us to separate the bright points from the dark points and basically light our scene. So if you look around here, you can see there's like some lights there, we got some lights up here, you know, and it, it basically, yeah, it's able to tell us 
where our, our, our light sources are coming from. However, there was one small issue that led us to have to basically redo that lighting. And here, here's, here's kind of how that works. So, when you scan a 360 HDR of an environment, you're basically getting a giant sphere. That's what your image ends up looking like. It, 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 you, it, you get a sphere that surrounds your environment. The problem though is that that sphere, it's not in three dimensions here, it's in, it's in two. Imagine I'm inside a sphere here of light, but the problem is, is that when you scan it in two dimensions, that light sphere has to kind of move with you because it's, it's just, it's at an infinite distance. It doesn't actually uh, move with your scene or anything like that. So when you have an issue like this, where you have a scene that has a, uh, a single top light, when you scan your HDR, whenever the uh, character is standing directly beneath the light, it's gonna look completely natural. But suddenly, if the character steps in 3D space, away from it, that, that 360 HDR, it's not gonna move away. It's gonna stick with your scene. So when it came time to render that video and, and light it and do all that stuff, we had to basically go through and in three dimensions put light sources back where they were. So that made it so we couldn't like actually rely on just our image map to recreate the scene. However, when you start using this and you have the LiDAR that actually scans your environment in three dimensions, you can feasibly have a, uh, a fully functioning 3D lighting environment that allows any characters to walk around in it and have the light sources react appropriately. It would be great to do like the HDR scan yeah. because I, I'm okay with the extra data sure. because we can definitely use it. Sure. Yeah. How, how long does that take scanning wise then? So scanning, if we did a medium resolution point cloud, uh, which is typically you're probably putting around about 15 million points, um, and then the HDR turned on, it'll take about you know, four, four minutes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> loading dock's done. We're going to start our, uh, we're going to chart our course from the loading dock back into the studio. Pretty good. The scans work? This will be, a, obviously, a, a much much denser point cloud once we're done, but it's just... Sure. Like, like I mean, about, it, are, it already looks super that's great. Crazy. Yeah. About a 1% preview of what the total point cloud will look like. It's kind of auto-adjusting. Is this the first one you guys have done? We did, so we did, yeah, we just did a couple out there, but otherwise, um, I took some scans in here before earlier, I can show you that, but we're currently taking a scan out there, so we gotta stay on this project while I'm doing that. But yeah. How long does it take? So each scan can range anywhere from like 40 seconds to six minutes or so. Okay. But yeah. Um, can it shoot, um, well, can it shoot uh, HDRIs? So yeah, it does HDR. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, just three stage HDR. Yeah, so the texture it does, but too. we're still figuring out like how how to best extract that though. Yeah. You know? And yeah. So this is the, the actual photo 360 view. Um, so okay. looking directly from the point of the scanner, you see since they turn the HDR on, it will auto adjust. Um, it does have the thermal imaging actually as well. Just what? just in the one one view, it's like a 70 degree uh, point of view so you can see it's not all the way 360 but um, that is it is still the only lidar scanner on the market with with any sort of thermal capabilities um, how much does this camera run so this one is uh, just the unit itself is like 18,500 um, but yeah kind of all in for anything you would need to get started is like 20 grand oh these are all the scan points yeah so when yeah, let's. It would be cool to explain the little scan bits, basically. What, what, let's. Uh, let, I'll, I'll go back to So the scan's done. How many scans was that? Like we went through the loading dock, through the hallway, studio, and a couple of the the cool rooms here. Yeah. So we did about uh, about 13, 14 scans. Oh my gosh! Uh, All right. So yeah. how like how are we gonna put? Okay, so how are we going to put all this data together? Sure. So, yeah, in the process, we kind of usually say registration, um, alignment, stitching together. When I say any of those, I mean all the same thing. It's, you know, all these scans 
really don't know where they are in, in 3D space. So it all comes to overlapping data. So every time we set it up, we make sure there's, there's overlapping data between those. And then essentially like putting a puzzle together. Mm -hmm. um, we just have to pretty much help it out a little bit. So here's an example of uh, a top-down view of the scans we've taken. These chunks, this chunk over here is one bundle um, that's all been together and I've got two of, two other scans that have not been registered yet. So all I have to do, I know this was over in front of the, the Airsoft um, stuff, so if I just hit this link, press this scan right here, we've now got this top down just between these two and we'll hit optimize and just see it snaps them together. We hit create link. So we'll do that one more time with this scan over here. Just get it close to where it should be. Say, hey, register with that one. Hit optimize and it snaps it together. Oh my God. Create link. That's it's so touch. stupidly <laughs> easy looking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Cause like each one of these files though is like super dense. There's like millions of points. Like they, they have to be huge file sizes. How the heck does this like work so quickly to yeah. align that stuff? So what we're seeing here, this isn't fully processed data yet. It's just a, a low low res kind of preview image. So okay. the, the raw data, you know, it's sitting on the, the BLK, then it transfers it over and just kind of initially does a process to it. Cause yeah, to fully process it, it can't quite handle it all on the, on the iPad Pro. Um, so once I dump this off onto the laptop, um, we'll finish processing and then that's when it'll like fully essentially unzip all the the real data So, um, yeah, this is just previewed stuff. That's that's super cool Yeah, like then cuz cuz honestly like of all the scans we've done though like piecing multiple scans together is By far the most difficult thing I've I've ever tried to do because like sure. even if you're like we have a flat area and sometimes like it seems like you can connect them the seams between the two, like segments, chunks, whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. aren't aren't even. So you have to kind of go through manually and like almost like polygon by polygon, like just connect every little tiny point. And there's millions of them, so it can yeah. be really, really lengthy. For sure. So like a really a good example though is also like uh, when we were doing that anime self-driving cars video. Yeah. When we did our full road scan, mm -hmm. um, we needed a longer road than the actual piece oh, we sure. scanned. So I ended up just duplicating it and aligning it. And, yep. and but the problem is, is that the, the, the road texture was pretty good yeah. that, we, that, we, that we got from the scan, but the seams kind of killed the whole thing, which, uh, sure. which led us to basically just making our own road over the whole uh, thing and just calling it a day. So it's, it's simpler, so there were still seams all over the place in the video, sure. but they're flying by so fast you can't see it. Yeah, but I, I wish there was like something like this when we were doing that. Yeah, so yeah, it's definitely a little bit different you know, with those when it is already a mesh. This is because this is in a point cloud format right now too. It kind of meshes. Well, shouldn't use meshing, but yeah, you know, it, it comes together a little bit more seamless. That's cool. Um, so yeah, so again, now it's just the, the point cloud, and then depending on you know what you want to use it afterwards I and mean, you can do things like mesh this data and texture it or like I said using it for, for reference and, mm -hmm. and the HDR stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's exciting to explore all those options. So what's yeah. the next step with this? Do we know or well, like the processing? Yeah, I mean for us like oh, for our us next steps like for what we we're trying to get to is like we're trying to get to having a full version of this model that we can use for upcoming videos and potentially even to you know use as a virtual tour for anyone who wants to see what our studio is like um so I, how do we get there because this is a lot of data Dude, this is a lot of data look at this yeah. like this is crazy so again this is just kind of like yeah low res preview of the data this would be a whole lot more solid wow. but it's also kind of like a nice little x-ray view so fun to just like yeah. Float around and see. Yeah. Well, I guess, so we have to process this data first exactly. before we mess with it, because it's just a preview. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we get to figure out how we want to play with it. Yeah, absolutely. Next steps to come. Sweet. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Hopefully, uh, we can get this out to you guys, so that way you can take a look and see what our studio's like without having to fly out here. Yeah. Yeah. The most convenient we'll work thing. Here. <laughs> or work here. Yeah. Well, sweet. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, sweet.